Okay, we're working on a 2014 Dodge Charger here, and this has the 8-speed transmission 845RE, and I'm going to be showing you how to change and check the transmission fluid in this, and uh, the very first thing that you're going to need to do is get it up on ramps or jack stands or something, because everything that you do is going to be from underneath the car, so you need to get it up by some means, or at least be able to get underneath the car. Okay, so before you get it, uh, you got to get it up off the ground before you can uh, work on the fluid. Uh, so you can either put it on jack stands or ramps and you can simply drive it up there or you can do like I did. I kind of got the front on, lifted from the back. However, when you put it on the back like this, I'm lifting from the, the rear differential. You want to have somebody holding those brakes or have it chalked in the front because it may try to roll and if it's um, just rear wheel drive it will roll so make sure to be uh, cautious when doing that um, the only other way is if you wanted to lift it from side to side and chalking one side at a time okay so before you change your transmission fluids here's some things you're gonna have to have so you're gonna have to order yourself a transmission pan uh, you can see the tape on here now this is this wacky torque sequence Now, usually I just kind of go in the middle and zigzag out and you're fine but for some reason this is the sequence I just wrote it on here I'm gonna go 89 inch pounds uh, this is gonna make it um, 80 inch pounds on your actual plug right here but I just wouldn't get it very tight uh, this comes with some some new screws and stuff here and uh, I've got so this is also a uh, printout on these but um, it's pretty straightforward as to um, getting this thing filled and uh, you know getting it to temperature um, we'll we'll use a scan tool and uh, usually you can if you warm it up for like 15 minutes is about where you need it but anyways I'm gonna be using the uh, max life you know if you don't want to use that you're more than welcome to get the Mopar 8 and 9 speed transmission fluid this is what I'm using so it is compatible you can look up the specs uh, this is just an 8 millimeter hex we're going to be using our Allen to get the um, fill plug. Um, see, also we're going to need, where is it? Okay, this is the uh, 10 millimeter that we're going to be using to take the uh, drain plug, or you would use to take the drain plug. And um, this here is a T40, so Torx 40. And a uh, inch pound torque wrench if you can get one. If not, I would suggest just, you know, snugging them up, um, you know, a little bit. Maybe even using a quarter inch ratchet. Just don't over tighten them. So, pretty much covers everything. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get, I said, we got to get it um, drained. We'll get the pan off here. Okay, so I almost forgot. All right, I have them sitting out here and I still forgot to talk about it, but you're going to need to get yourself some sort of a fluid transfer pump. Now, ideally, you want one of these. You can get these in any part store. I'm probably going to use this big one over here because I think it goes down into my big jug better, but you're going to need one of these pumps uh, to be able to get the fluid back in here. Okay, so got our 10 millimeter hex. Looks surprisingly clean. Now on a drain to fill, you're supposed to get somewhere around five, 5.8 quarts. So you're gonna need to um, put back at least five and kind of check it from there. There's gonna definitely be about three quarts left up in 
the torque converter in places. Okay, so we'll just um, get to work on taking the pan bolts later. All right, so we're going to start loosening these down here at this end. We'll keep our pan under there. Even though it's drained, we will still get some fluid. Okay, so the only one that's even remotely difficult to get to is this one right here. And that's where this extended comes in handy because it's really slim. So we're just going to start loosening these off. I'm not going to take them out. So we should start draining down here at this end. I've got all but these on this far end out. All right, so these are the only ones left. So it's hitting on the brace down there, so I'm gonna take <clears throat> this in and slide it back, and then I'll let it drain down into the pan there. Yeah, not a lot. Not a lot in there. Very little bit. So there wasn't very much left in it, but I wanted to be prepared. Okay, so easy enough. We'll just uh, give this a little bit of a wipe down here. Okay, we're ready to get this in place. You want to take that little cap off of there that covers the filter and it's pretty pretty straightforward I'm going to be putting a little medium Loctite on mine I don't like the idea of things trying to vibrate loose so let me get this first one started here alright so I just got one started here and then here and we'll just start getting the rest of them in so once you get a couple of them to hold it, it's just get them loosely until you get them all into alignment. And uh, you know the same way that we're going to torque it, we're also going to make sure that we start snugging it down the same way. So you see the the sequence so I'm just going to continue on and get them all snug and then I'll go get the uh, inch pound torque wrench and uh, not only does your new pan have your uh, filter, but it has the, the new magnets and stuff in it. So uh, you definitely want to get yourself 
another pan. I'll leave a link to this. They're not that bad. So I've got my inch pound set to 89 inch pounds. And this here is already tightened. Don't need to mess with that. Um, I said putting this tape on here only took like a minute. And this is just really an easy way of doing it. So you have to look back and forth for your paper. And can't see over here and I'll have to probably go around and check this a couple times because usually when you torque it somewhere it loosens up somewhere else I went around it twice with the ratchet So if I wasn't using an inch pound, I would just probably use a quarter inch ratchet and snug them down good. You don't want to get too carried away with it. All right, so I'll just go around and double check it and we'll be all finished up with this. Okay, we've got our eight millimeter. Here's where we're gonna fill it at. And if this is really tight, just get a cheater pipe or another wrench, closed in wrench to get some leverage. Now, the little pan kit come with a new one of these, so it's got a new um, seal on it, so we may use that. Okay, you can see, I just got a pan under there. We're gonna have some drippage. Got my pump set up in here. It goes all the way to the bottom. And we're just gonna kinda go in through here. Start pumping in, get in what we can. Now when I get it cranked up here, I won't be able to go over this like this. We'll probably have to do this a little bit differently or we'll be melting our tube here, but um, you kinda see what I'm doing for now. So I'm not quite sure how much I'll get in here initially, maybe three quarts or so, but um, <clears throat> you should be putting somewhere between five to six quarts. I've already dripping here for some reason. You have to go a little bit slower. Okay, I actually managed to get like four quarts in here and I've got this little piece of heat shield material shoved up here now I had to switch to, to the other hose that didn't have the tip now you want to like go up in there a good little ways or you know a little ways not much and kind of go up and at an angle and back when I did that I used this hose I was able to get another quart in there and it's just now dripping so we're gonna circulate a little bit and we'll get it um, <clears throat> get it running and see if we can get um, let's see we'll get about two more quarts or close to it okay so I've got a couple of quarts in this jug I'm gonna see if I can't get this in here so like I said I got that hose shoved up in there I've got a little piece of Heat material on my hose here because it's on the exhaust and I'm gonna I'm gonna have somebody hold the brake shift it through a few gears see if we can't get some more of this fluid circulating and uh, we have to get it up to let's see what it was at uh, hold on okay so I'm getting some more fluid in here and we're gonna also Run through some gears, have somebody hold the brake. I know it's not full yet, I just didn't have the hose up in there right. And we're going to get it up to temperature, set between 86.
Come dribbling back out here. We'll just run it from drive. We'll help get that fluid circulating through. So the main thing is get the hose like pointed up and back and get it in there that little bit. That way you know. All right, I'm gonna continue to get the rest of this in. All right, so we pretty much got the temperature where we need it. So um, you can see it here, we've got it at 89. And so you can also check this on your display here. Just go through this and it'll pull up. So this is uh, running the same, so I know this is accurate. So anywhere from 86 to 122, we're gonna go back under now and uh, add a little more and see if it's going to be dripping out okay so you'll know when you get this filled properly you'll get a good little trickling stream coming out and uh, you know not just the trickle that you're getting when you're as you're pumping it in saying you do have to get up in there a little bit <clears throat> but um, said I've been running through gears and when you get it get it to the right level you'll know it you'll get a good good stream I've got it up to about a hundred Fahrenheit right now so we finally got it trickling we're going to go ahead and cap this thing off so you don't want it pouring out but uh, you want you want to know that you got it full so uh, another important note, make absolutely sure you get this plug on there before you kill that engine or it's going to come a dumping out of here. So I'm going to get, get my 8 millimeter, and we're going to go ahead and snug this up. This is our new, this is our new plug here. It's got a new seal on it. Be very careful around your exhaust. Be advisable to have some long sleeves. All right, so we got that snugged up. Don't have any leaks anywhere, so everything's looking good. So this little heat shield piece come in handy. I just use that to keep me from accidentally melting my hose. All right, so that's going to do it on uh, changing this transmission fluid. Like I said, not too bad of a job other than just you know, getting it up on ramps and getting it off the ground. And you know you want to say have it on four ramps so it's level, and make sure you got it as level as you can. But like I said, if you fill it until it's trickling out, you know you should be around five to six quarts to uh, on a drain fill. So I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. As always, I invite you to subscribe. And thanks for watching.